What the hell is wrong with society today? I know, I hate to jump into this with a uh, full-fledged question for you, uh, but something for you to think about, actually, for the entire week. That's your homework from UFO Buster Radio. What in the flying fuck is wrong with society today? Think about that this week, and if you feel like you've got the gonads to answer it, you know where to hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, believe it or not, you can actually go to at uh, Horde Dark, which is really the Dark Horde, but I had to switch the words around because there's a bunch of Dark Horde people on, on YouTube, a lot of Dark Horrors too, apparently. So I couldn't go with Dark Whore. So I went with Dark Horde. Flipped opposite 180 degrees. So it's Horde Dark. What am I talking about? It is the Dark Horde. Basically it is the. uh, The top of the umbrella. For UFO Buster Radio. And, And really it next year. Will turn into. A full fledged paranormal paradise. Right now. If you want to follow it, go ahead and do so. At Horde Dark at the Twitters. No Instagram yet. We'll get to that eventually. But right now, there is a lot of paranormal writers, authors, if you will, who are um, doing the right thing. They are retweeting the account for the Dark Horde. And basically, we're getting some traffic. But the best thing is, is that uh, the Twitter bot, aptly known as the Dark One, is uh, basically finding paranormal stories in order to share with followers. And that includes authors, authors, movies, uh, producers, anyone that's attached to the paranormal and has some kind of a tweet about it. It's, it's being captured by the Dark One. So follow it, if that's what you're into. I find that a lot of people who are into the paranormal seem to share the UFO, the UFO side of things. And that's because at one point, you you know, UFOs and the paranormal were synonymous. They were like the same thing. And then somebody said, no, we want it to be ufology. We want to study it. We want it to be its own thing. We don't want to be caught up with no demons and ghosts. Nobody gives two fucks about that. Yeah, so someone decided, let's deviate a little. Let's separate them, right? Because they might be a little different or one and the same. Nobody fucking knows. But that's what happened. And so check it out. Now today, you know, I I started with that question because I have, I kind of got this uh, dark mood about me. I do. And I've got three stories on here, and really these are all, uh, as you would say, 411 stories, FYI, just so that you know, type of stories. Nothing groundbreaking, though there is one article here where one of you, some of you, all of you, may have had an experience with this particular being, if you will. Last week I talked about the reptilians, but apparently this particular species, likes to cohabitate, likes to do some dirty deals upon humanity in conjunction with the reptilian types. So I tried to look up a a bunch of like uh, dark music, really, to get into this conversation, and fuck my life, I swear to God that half of it sounded like it was uh, out of Rocky. And then I started getting flashbacks about Rocky, what I said about him looking like an old woman. Because he does. I actually saw uh, over the weekend, well, the weekend's not over for me yet, but uh, yesterday, the Rambo Last Blood movie. Ugh. You know, there there is something that he does when he does these films because he literally is able to employ, like... Retired women, grandmas, to do like body double work. That's where I think that 
any of Stallone's movies where he tries to reprise the roles of his youth goes to. Really? Like, uh, you got some lady who's like 85 who, who still wants to be an actress? Fucking put her in an action film. She could be a body double for Sylvester Stallone. I mean, why not? You know what I noticed too? He's got so much fucking Botox in his face and lips. He no longer has that uh, that little curl that he used to have on his lip when he said, Adrian! It doesn't happen anymore. That shit does not move. It is stiff as fuck. Yeah. It's not the Stallone we grow up with. It's not. But he, listen, he's got heart. Uh, let's just say that. Heart in a fucking juiced up as fuck. But he's doing what he can to keep the Sylvester Stallone <laughs> image alive for AARP. I don't know. I just, I don't know. There's like two, three, four different sides to this. Like, you know, you you can have pride in the work that you do and, and the fact that you promote so many things. And I think that's fantastic. But when you go on TV and film, you look like a reptilian that had a bad skin day. That's just not right. Like uh, like you put on a, a meat sack to cover your reptilian nature and you didn't quite get it right. You know, it's not fitting right. And it's all bubbly and shit. And it, uh, I don't know. See what I mean? See, didn't I tell you today is a dark episode? Completely dark. I know it's Sunday. Maybe it's because it's the end of the weekend. I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. End of the weekend's here. What am I going to do now? Maybe I'll do a podcast and be angry as hell on it. Uh, yeah, so actually, the good thing is I've got like six songs, but only three fucking stories. So one of these songs is uh, 2.45 Fucked. It's not going to be played. But let's start with the one that sounded like a El Rocky Balboa, a.k.a. Sylvester Stallone. Oh, oh, by the way, I do have a correction. Apparently, he was banned from Australia just for a little bit while the authorities tried to figure out why he was dumping uh, um, steroids out of his airplane. And then he wrote a letter afterwards apologizing to the folks in Australia because he's just trying to keep appearances, y'all. And then, listen, I invite you guys. You think I'm talking shit. You think you think I'm being fucked up as a moonraker. I invite you to go see that last uh, Rambo movie. There is one point where it's like the fucking silhouette of his face and he's talking to the actress. You know, they're like face to face and shit. And I swear to you, the fa- you guys have... S- Listen, stop fucking around. I know you guys have seen Jim Henson's Muppets, right? And you know those fucking Muppets, their faces don't move really well because they're kind of stiff. They're like foam and shit. That silhouette... They could have put a fucking Muppet with his outline... In that silhouette. Because he's got so much fucking stuff injected into his face. That's what it moved like. It it was... That was scary, to be honest. That really was scary. Somebody should have done some CGI. Fuck we got CGI for. Gotta say hello to Gutter. Or Guter. Welcome to the Sunday Angry episode. And by the way, this next song is probably the only positive song that you're going to hear tonight. Because it says, listen, the description for this damn song was that it was angry. And then you shit angry about it. It's like a fucking Rocky uh, montage. Check it out.
Before we get into the next story, I just got to read this to you because this is what the first story is about. And really, uh, reading this is about the only thing I can do to make this story worthwhile because in the long run, I'm, I'm sure it'll mean something to somebody up in Washington, D.C., but uh, fuck my life, who cares? Uh, the National Archives and Records Administration. Some of you have heard this name before, the National Archives, when it comes to the United States, um, but here's something that's coming right from their website. And again, it might not mean two fucks for anybody. Uh, of all the documents and materials created in the course of business conducted by the United States federal government, only 1% to 3% are so important for legal or historical reasons that they are kept by us forever. Like, do they put them on disk or a USB? I don't know how to, but I don't get it. Yeah, the problem is, too, that uh, the shit that we're interested in is so heavily redacted, who gives a fuck who keeps it? To be honest, all the stories that have to do with uh, UFOs and alien encounters and things like that, are, they're so damn redacted. You would think that people are signing their names as uh, black lines. Yeah. White tip. None of that really helps anyone, national archival fuckers. None of it. Let's get into the first news report, which has to do with the National Archives. So let's get into this real quick because it's going to mean absolutely nothing to anyone who does not live in Washington, D.C. Uh, I, I, you know what? There's people who travel to Washington, Washington D.C. just for the fuck of it. I mean, some people do travel there uh, just to check out the government, uh, look at monuments and shit like that uh, because it's on their bucket list, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why. I've never done it. You know, I've gone past it on a train. That's about as close as I've gotten. Uh, but here it is. A new exhibit at the National Archives explores government UFO documents. And then they should put a parenthesis. Hashtag heavily fucking redacted. Like this this story, this article right now that uh, was uh, written by the Washingtonian should have been partly redacted. That way people know what the fuck they're getting into. That way you know. Right? You're going to go in there and you're probably going to see a bunch of redacted freaking papers if they're put together by the government. So you're going to have to learn to read in between the lines. Lots of fucking lines. You'll be reading in between the lines forever. Like you'll leave there and you'll be ordering fucking food and you'll be reading in between the lines even then. You'll be asking away to all kind of crazy shit and leave them shocked. The U.S. Air Force apparently ended uh, a two-decade-plus-long UFO investigation known as Project Blue Book. Thank you, National Archive. It's on fucking television now. I don't even know why we need to know this. Fifty years ago, uh, apparently this week, meaning about uh, last week, that's when it ended. Third week of November, 50 years ago, it was over. Project Blue Book was done. And now today, 2019, the year 2019, we have a, uh, what is it, History Channel special on it. Yeah. So then we could see uh, Heineck running around with a bunch of fake characters. That's what Project Blue Book has come to these days. According to the article, it turns out that Project Blue Book had uh, a shitstorm of nothing evidence. Basically, is what the U.S. Air Force concluded back then, is that uh, these aerial threats phenomena, because that's what they call them now, aerial phenomena, these uh, things, these events that they covered, which many a times they attributed to swamp gas, they 
basically represented technological developments or principles beyond the range of present day scientific knowledge. The word that I left out was no, 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 no. Basically, that was their conclusion. No. The majority of the things they investigated, no, 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 sir, no, ma'am. It was swamp gas. What? What did you eat last night? Beans. Oh, fuck. You created your own swamp gas. Basically, that's what they uh, said to us. Now today, what, 50 years later? Now they want to say, hey, we actually have some on our own equipment for you to look at. Not because we gave it up, because someone stole it and gave it to Tom DeLonge and his boys. And they put it everywhere. So it's no longer a situation about uh, these quote-unquote UFO sightings not representing Uh, technological developments or principles beyond the range of present day scientific knowledge because our own equipment does not get it nor do our pilots you if you're in the Washington D.C. area you are going to be fortunate enough December 5th of this year through January 8th If you end up somewhere in a National Archives museum and you just so happen to walk through the door (laughs) uh, because it was on your bucket list, but you had no idea, you you no ideas for my people up north. You had no ideas that it was going to be all about ufology, investigations, and uh, enthusiasms, interests. If you walk into that shit, get ready for a uh, significant mind-fucking probe. Get a lot of redaction. I just, you know what, I'm sorry. I just see a lot of redaction when it comes to government documents about this topic. Um, But from the clips that they show in this particular article, which is linked in the description, they're going to have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of news articles on there also where they they go back into the archives and and, uh, they pull out news reports and things like that that you'll be able to look at and see there along with government documents, which may or may not be completely redacted just for your viewing enjoyment. I don't see this drawing a lot of people for some reason. I really don't. You know, I just... It's all on the internet. You fucking don't gotta go to the National Archive to look at old, old shit because every... Every ufologist, quote unquote, who's been researching this, who's made their name when it comes to researching this, has all these fucking documents already. There is no breaking ground here. Zero. The National Archive is, again, like every other organization out there, is jumping on the coattails of all the UFO hype as of the last two years, almost three. And decided, let's bring the people. Let's bring the people in on UFOs. I mean, listen, let's make it legit and let's have like a uh, a wax figure of Tom DeLong there holding a probe. And virtually probing people as they come in. It's like a bonus. Get a, you know, pay 10 bucks more, get a free probing from Tom DeLong. And, uh, hey, at the end of it, you also get a cigar and get to smoke a little. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to get to the National Archive, uh, 701 Constitution Avenue, Northwest, why the fuck would they put this in the article? I, I don't understand. Why do we need the address for the National Archive? They're freaking crazy as hell. Uh, with the one thing they put on here, 701 of the sightings reported during the uh, Project Blue Book are still considered as unidentified. Is that so? I think that uh, ever since Project Blue Book ended, the uh, issues continue to mount. Unidentified is uh, becoming unforgivable in the eyes of many people who have followed this situation for years. 
You've been told no. You've been told that you're... Were you on crystal? No. Were you drunk? Were you out with your buddies that night? No. No. Tell me about your childhood. Yeah, basically every other explanation, uh, meteor showers, every single explanation you could possibly find, demonic babies, in order to explain the fact that what you saw was not what you saw, was given to them. And now we have government videos that can't be explained. Uh, you know, this is why I'm angry today. It's stories like this. I feel so, so perturbed, so dysfunctional. Like, I know what it means to go postal now. I feel, I feel some postality coming into me. I feel like I'm going to just lose it. I do. Uh, here's one song. It said it was angry. I don't know if it's angry or not, but I guess if you're in a fucked up relationship, it could be. Uh, this is called No Need to Beg. No Need to Beg, bitch. Pay up the money. I don't know. Uh, but here we go. There's no need to beg any pardon for me. By the way, I, I kind of uh, monitor the uh, UFO Buster Radio Twitter space. And uh, when the tweet went out regarding this episode right now, number 304, uh, Greco Suave said, uh, a little bit of piss came out of me when I saw this. I, I don't know. Greco, I have no idea where to go with that. I don't... Uh, is it from excitement? Is it because... You couldn't make it to the loo? 
because you got to listen to the podcast. I'm assuming Greco might be listening live right now. So Greco, feel free to let me know what what you what you talking about, Willis. Why would you lose? Why would you why would you pee on yourself? Why would you indeed? Anyway, that was uh uh <laughs> one of the dark songs, angry songs, should I say, not dark. Uh that we had for today because of the National Archive like who gives two flying fucks or 304. There is one more and then we'll get into the alien shit. But this one, god, Lee it doesn't make sense to me. I swear, I like I need someone from this organization to fucking sit down and tell me why. Why, damn it, why? Why does it take so damn fucking long? NASA is at it again. NASA is alien hunting one more time. Again. We heard already that the 2020 rover is going to Mars, not looking for anything that's alive. Nope. If it's alive, fuck, we are not going to touch that shit. No, not not even with our rover's penis. We're not even going to touch that shit. Now... It turns out that NASA is testing an alien hunting upside down underwater rover in Antarctica. Yeah. It's one of the uh, several plans to explore two ocean worlds for signs of life. And and we're talking about the moons, you know, outside of uh, Saturn and Jupiter. One of them specifically being Enceladus. Because we have hints that there might be water, oceans, on these moons. But again, why do you why do you want to like not just fucking find the fucking life? I, I don't understand. Why do we have to look for evidence of life? Evidence of life in chemical uh, chemical po- uh, <laughs> uh, it's that kind of podcast compounds right why is it that we need to look for chemical compounds and not actual fucking life like can't we retrieve something from these places can't we just scoop some water up bring the fucking thing back in the meantime while you're bringing it back guess what test the bitch put it through whatever you need to you know if you find something living fuck Poke and prod it. That's what happens on Earth, right? According to many people, they get poked and prodded. Do it. Just do it. But stop with this chemical compound nonsense. I don't understand. There's got to be a point where you say, fuck it, let's just uh, just build something. Let's build something that's going to give us real evidence and we can stop screwing around. That's not what's happening. This uh, particular little rover robot. It's going to be called the Buoyant Rover for Under Ice Explorations, or BRUI. B-R-U-I-E. Fantastic name. Sucks wet balls. Um, It turns out that uh, the reason why they call it this is because it's going to rely mostly on being able to remain buoyant so it doesn't sink to the bottom of the fucking ocean on one of these moons. Brewery is going to contain a, a couple of uh, scientific instruments and they're going to measure some parameters related to life. <laughs> Whoa! How novel is that? Why not, right? Uh, it's going to look for dissolved oxygen, water, salinity, pressure, and temperature. Folks, put your seats in the uh, upright position or stick your legs. Uh, and I'm sorry, stick your head in between your legs because we've been fucked again. Completely. 
Now we continue to talk about in this article about some of the great things that the rover can do, like power itself down safely. So it can save energy. And the hope is, and the reason why it's over in Antarctica, because they're testing for it to be able to withstand being buoyant and functional for months under the ice in the water. About the only thing in this particular story that might save us from a total fucking loss when it comes to the the hunt for life, really, is the fact that this uh, thing, really, if you look at the pictures of this thing, because I actually found one, but for some reason it wouldn't load up to the podcast host. If you look at it, it looks like some kid got two fucking wheels, got all excited about it, stuck two fucking uh, action cameras on it, and just let it roll. That's what it looks like. Those two cameras are really about the only thing that's going to help us really just skip this whole chemical testing bullshit and get to fucking life. Uh, the two rotating high-definition cameras, uh, the rover can look <laughs> look down into the ocean floor and up towards the ice. But you got to have eyes on this stuff. You just... You gotta be able to see it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have like a. There's apparently no microscopes on it. Like you're not gonna be able to scoop up a little water since you're fucking bathing in it. You can't scoop it up and look at it under a microscope. Wouldn't that be a fucking novel idea, right? You got all this fucking water that you're swimming in. Why not keep a microscope so that at the very least you can tell us whether there's some kind of microbial life within the water that you're polluting with your shitty-ass robot. It's not going to go that far, no. That's, um, we'd rather still look for chemical signatures. That's a little easier, I guess. Than, I don't know. And maybe it's just me. Maybe it just it seems so fucking logical that science isn't even up to it, I guess. I don't know. There's a quote here from uh, Kevin Hand. He's a lead scientist working on a brewery. Uh, and he said this, the ice shells covering these distant oceans serve as a window into the oceans below, and the chemistry of the ice could help us, f- could help feed life uh, within those oceans, and in turn help us identify life. He said, here on Earth, the ice covering our polar ocean serves a similar role, and our team is particularly interested in what is happening where the water meets the ice. I just don't know. I, I, like I feel like NASA needs like someone like Elon Musk just to go in there and say, boof, you know, kick the door down, shut the fuck up. I'm going to do this my way. We're going my speed, which is light speed. No. No, 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 this, this isn't working. They they really do need someone like a maverick to go in there and shake the fucking place up. Really. I just don't know. It turns out that um, NASA is also already working on constructing what they're going to call the Europa Clipper. And it's an orbiter. And it's going to be launching in 2025. And it's going to study the moon Europa around Jupiter. Um, And it's going to basically help... Determine a lot of things, right? Because you'll be able to determine where the fuck are you going to throw a shitty little ass buoyant robot so that it actually gets into the fucking water. Not like... Can you, can you imagine if they land this thing on a on a nice shelf and then the fucking thing cannot find a way to get into the water? They're big fail, fuckers. Uh, so, right now, there are some articles that kind of indicate that this brewery robot, the buoyancy bot would actually be launched in 2025, but that's not the case. See, they they need to find out where the fuck is the crack. They need to find the crack in order to throw in the robot. Otherwise, why even fucking send it? More to come. Literally, more to come on this one. I just don't know what to, to do with NASA. I mean, I know they have their perks. They got their moments, but goddamn. It is basically... 
we're on the eve of 2020, and you tell me in five years we'll be able to find a crack in the ice to send a fucking floating robot to only look for chemicals. Ooh, you just cannot write this stuff. into the news intro because I figured I have enough time to make a 10 yard dash to refill the vodkas but that didn't happen uh, so guess what we have a story now so one thing that I wanted to do you know from now through December is kind of look at these uh, aka alien species that have been known to abduct people on the planet and not known personally there is a lot of evidence from folks who go through these abduction experiences, they go through this uh, programming, if you will. And there are certain species that they tend to report a lot. And sometimes people will report two or three species together that can go out and probe and, uh, you know, doing all these things to folks. And I don't know why. I don't know why. But apparently... They don't really exist. They only exist in chemical form, according to NASA. They only fart and breathe and do all that kind of stuff that they send little shitty-ass robots to to investigate. But I would think that this particular alien breed called a mantis or insectoid, I would think that they would uh, kind of laugh at the fact that NASA would send 
you know, a uh, a brewery, a buoyancy robot towards their neck of the woods for anything. Now, this is a particular brand of alien that looks like, in many reports, like a praying mantis. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not one that's uh, afraid of uh, insects. But if I saw a seven-foot fucking praying mantis, I will break the fuck out. I will never come back. I will leave the damn country if I need to. That's just not happening. That is not happening. Uh, These particular aliens, which some people like to call the mantis alien, apparently um, look a lot like a praying mantis. No fucks given. That's That's what it is. And we know praying mantis are carnivorous bipedal insects. And uh, they look like they would fuck something up. Many reports of people who have been abducted by these mantis-type aliens say that they're between 6 and 7 feet tall with really long, thin torsos. They have several hands that come from additional joints, uh, arms and necks. Of course, come on, they look like a fucking gigantic... (laughs) Mantis. Uh, Their heads are insect-like and triangular with large slanted eyes of deep brown or black. If you're laying around at home, it's the middle of the night, something's in your room that wakes you up. You look up and you see a seven-foot insect looking over you, talking to you, telepathically, what would you do? What would you do? This article is actually from Gaia.com. You know, Gaia is not one of my favorite places just because they had, um, they were really involved with those uh, Aztec alien bodies from about, what, three years ago with Jaime Musan. Um... Which actually, the the whole, uh, these alien bodies are still being reported on, believe it or not. People are still researching them. There, there are still claims that these bodies are the real deal. They're alien beings that were being preserved down in the Aztec regions of South America. But, as we know, a lot of times, things that have to do with Jaime Musan just don't turn out right. Uh, so anyway... I digress. Let's continue. Uh, the mantis aliens apparently are the most mysterious and unsettling of all extraterrestrial creatures. I'll be honest, between them and the greys, fuck, what would you do? What would, not even that, what did you saw, what if you saw a fucking six, uh, six, seven foot uh, reptilian? That would be unsettling as well. I I don't know. It's, it's kind of a fucking toss up. Uh... The article makes a note to the fact that mantis are usually not as widely reported as the greys and the Nordic aliens. Why would you even... Like I've seen pictures that people draw of Nordics. Why would you even report them? That just makes no fucking sense. Nordics look like tall ass freaking people from like uh, the, you know, the northern part of the uh, hemisphere of the planet. Yeah, the blue-eyed blondes from, you know, Norway or something like that. That's that's what they look like. They don't look like uh, really freaky. But apparently, Nordics are in it to win it more than the uh, the Mantis aliens are, and probably for good reason. Like, Like I said, you don't want to be caught in the dark with a gigantic Mantis breathing down your neck. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's just gross. Uh, I can't do it. Um, communication that people have reported again telepathic many human abductees uh, receive telepathic messages from these uh, <laughs> alien mantis and apparently though here's the funny part for you guys who are listening these uh, mantis aliens apparently like to talk to each other not telepathically but by using Sounds that we might associate with like clicking. So they will like 
do clicking sounds with each other, which uh, people have interpreted as being their language, but they would use telepathy in order to speak to humans. It's very strange. Uh, the Mantis aliens are often seen as the overseers and often, often appear to be the leadership positions of power doing abductions. So they kind of call the shots. They manage the abduction experience to make sure that it is uh, as worthwhile for you as it is for them. But I don't think that at the end of it, uh, you're smoking a cigarette, they are. And in many abduction experiences, the uh, mantis alien is usually accompanied by several small gray aliens uh, who basically, you know, get to do the dirty work. Many of the abductees that have experienced these particular scenarios with the mantis often describe the alien greys as being kind of like drones or controlled by a kind of hive mentality by the other alien races that are present in their abduction experience. That is just, I mean, it is, it is bizarre. It really is. You know, mantis aliens, god dang. The worst part is, you couldn't, how could you prove that unless you stole like a fucking arm and a leg or, or steal a fucking antenna? Like just jump onto the bitch's freaking head and just rip off an antenna and, and bring it with you. How else would you be able to explain to people that that happened to you? Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been abducted by one of these mantis aliens, please grab an antenna and bring it with you. Bring it back. Hide it somewhere. Somewhere where they can't see it. Somewhere where the sun don't shine. As long as you get it back and nobody cares, just bring it back. Because I guarantee you, if you bring back a mantis antenna, Someone's going to believe some shit happened to you. Sadly, it might be the government, in which you'll disappear forever. But at least you brought some evidence back, back and you, you can feel proud of yourself and accomplished. That you were able to put a hurting on with some, one of them some bitches. That's for sure. Uh, many of the folks also believe that the origin of these mantis aliens is the Draco system. And because they come from the Draco system... They actually work hand in hand with reptilians. Guter says people abducted claim Mantis is in charge of Grays. People say Grays is robot. Yes, Guter. Uh, that's kind of like what the article said. That basically these Grays are just uh, the guys that do all the dirty work. You know, spread the cheeks, probe the people. That's what they do. But sadly enough, you do have to be an experienced sir in order to be part of this conversation. And how do you turn away from these folks? Because again, it is a scary experience to have something that big look like that. With a bunch of little gray aliens going around holding you down for whatever business they need to conduct. Why wouldn't you be scared shitless about that? I just... And why wouldn't people take you seriously, at least? I will say this. I haven't seen too many abduction stories on Facebook. It, it was a time where it was a thing. Like, people would report that all the time and share it in groups and things like that. I haven't seen a whole lot of that, but... Sign of the times. I think that uh, the way ufology is going, the way people are literally coming out of the closet, I think soon we'll be seeing that uptick. We'll be seeing a lot of people sharing their news, and maybe some of them will be emboldened to take action and bring back some evidence from their experiences. True story. Check out this one. Yeah. 
How many other UFO podcasts do you listen to that gives you music worth listening to? Uh, in between the news articles, that's uh, I don't think there's any. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to put it out there. And if you feel the same way, you should share it. You should like it. You should retweet it. You should like it. You should send it to your peeps. Keep the podcast alive. And if you have anything else to say about it, say it to my face. Just say it to my face. There's one thing I was thinking about when it comes to abductees, right? So, you know, many of them share this this message of hope. How aliens are here to save mankind for themselves. Is that a bit of a Stockholm Syndrome, do you think? Do you think that maybe... Uh, people have shared his experience with these abductors for so long that they undergo this particular syndrome. Like they really begin to believe that it's, it's for their own good. Do they believe the brainwashing? Because I'm going to tell you right now, anybody that takes you against your will, probes you, brainwashes you and tells you it's for your own good. We're trying to save you, Carl. We're trying to save you, Carl. No. All of that's not, it's not good. That You know, the fact that they take you against your own will makes no fucking sense. It can't be for the good of humanity. It can't be for your good. So stop believing the lies. It is, it's got to be a lie. I just, I just don't see it any other way. And this whole conversation is not to make fun of people who are being abducted because, listen, if it's really happening, it's fucked up. And that's what I'm trying to say. If you're being taken against your will, probed, prodded, brainwashed, it's not a good situation. No one in that particular act is trying to help you. Not in a single way. They're not trying to help you. They're not trying to educate you. 
They're not trying to make your life better. It's just, as they say, the military, it's foobar. It's fucked up beyond all recognition. So don't stock, you know, Stockholm Syndrome yourself into a corner. You fight. You fight your ass off because shit's bananas. This is the end of the episode. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, maybe tomorrow I won't be so angry. I don't know. It might just be a week of angriness. Might be the week that I just uh, lose it and shut down the podcast altogether. Who, who fucking knows? But I'm signing out, and I thank you for listening. I appreciate every single one of you. Moonraker out. I'll check you out tomorrow. Ciao. Thank you.